Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV Velocities in Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. We're going to review the new record from The Antlers entitled Familiars. Um, the Antlers, Tom, we reviewed Hospice mm -hmm. um, a year later when we were starting Velocities in Music. That album yeah. came out in 2009. Hospice was this incredibly heart wrenching just tale of death and how you deal with it, and it was just terribly emotional. A beautiful record, mm -hmm. and really launched the Antlers at least into indie stardom. Yeah. Um, this is a very well known band, and a couple of years ago they came out, I think it was 2011, I think so. um, they came out with Burst Apart, which is a much more contemporary. Mm -hmm. um, I I wouldn't call it pop, but it was definitely more accessible yes. um, record. A lot of bright guitars, some very, very just nice songwriting. Um, so this is a band that has changed their sound numerous times. They had a couple albums before that too that I, honestly I'm less familiar with. But now Familiars, um, this you see a major shift in sound mm -hmm. on this record. Tom, mm -hmm. where are they going here? Well, they're going. You know, sometimes I feel like they're going for more of a smooth jazz feel. A smooth jazz. Uh, they put a, listen to a little Kenny G. No, I knew you were going to say G. that. Obviously, this. <laughs> is far from Kenny G. No, it's not. Uh, Kenny it, G. It's not soprano sax solo after soprano sax solo. Uh, Although you know, they, 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 we could suggest that for an improvement. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, it would really make this album better, right? It's a little no, bit of soprano but, sax. But you have very laid back, uh, kind of jazzy drums. Yeah, you know, it, the, the a lot clean, of ride cymbal. Oh, you know, a lot of ride cymbal. Uh, a lot of clean, kind of moving guitar. Mm -hmm. Just very smooth. Yeah. Um, you also have some horns kind of coming in and out. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's also that classic. Classic, and, and the one thing that I think is is kind of there in all of Antler's albums is that kind of ambient mood that ju that just permeates through everything else going on in the mix. That 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 kind of background sound that bolsters everything up and and provides a little bit of mood to it. Because Burst Apart really was a little bit more of a sharp album. You know, the beats were very deliberate. They're very not like in your face to a lot like big hip hop beats, but they were very you know very obvious. Yeah. I would say yeah. here. Thing Much more traditional, he, accessible song. Right? Yeah, here everything about these tracks in the mix is a little bit more laid back, and they kind of set the set the stage for the vocals to come in and just kind of warble their way through the tracks. Yeah, this is definitely an album. Like I can see. Well, I mean, we saw the Antlers play several in yeah, 2010 um, and on their tour for hosp for Hospice, and and it, they kind of seem like a band that just had, really commands that bar presence. Mm -hmm. I kind of see them playing this jazz influenced album. In in like a smoky bar, yeah, um, and, sure. and that would be a really good ambiance for it. Now, you know, the thing that that has constantly been a part of the Antler sound is piano, and that's definitely here, and the very emotive vocals. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say that the main focus of most of these tracks is the piano parts and the trumpets. Almost all of these tracks feature trumpet parts, and if you're mm -hmm. like me and really like that aspect and are into jazz, this that's a lot of that's that's really um, kind of a refreshing sound to me. Now, I don't think that this sound is for every everybody, and I think fans of the Antlers are going to really struggle with this at times, um, because this is a band taking a risk here. They're going for yeah. this a, a sound that is very original, because they're literally fusing their already unique indie rock uh, perspective and then infusing it with almost like a Miles Davis as like kind of blue era um, you know trumpets and, and jazz club feel and there's there's several um, times in this record especially on a little bit of the of a, there's really no heavy tracks on this record mm -hmm. but a little bit of more of the upper intensity tracks for relatively um, that that have a fusion vibe to them so mm -hmm. this is definitely a, a, a change in direction for the band um, I would say that that some of the that the guitars definitely play a a much smaller role. Mm -hmm. Usually the guitar parts are mixed way down. More uh, for accents. They're more for mm -hmm. accents. They're, they're rarely there to provide melody. Most of the melody is coming from piano and the vocals mm -hmm. um, with, the, with the trumpets just providing kind of just this bass uh, mm -hmm. just bass like you know, horn sound that just kind of these long whole notes maybe you know two measures of, of one note mm -hmm. um, is just held out and, and, and sustained. And I, and I think it just gives this just that, that ambiance, that really mm -hmm. slow moving. These songs do move slowly. Yeah, um, they it's, do. it's all about the vocalist and how he is just, you know, projecting his vocals. There's many times where I think he just belts it out, goes up into his upper range, and just really mm -hmm. belts it out, and it's a very powerful effect. Um, however, 
I, 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 well, I do think that there's, you know, some, some highlight tracks on here. No, Tom, you and I both tra picked Track 1, Palace, mm -hmm. and Track 3, Hotel. Um, a number of other tracks we were all over the place on, Yeah. Um, which is usually a good sign. Um, I don't know if this is actually a good sign here as much as that this, this record, it's kind of hard to discern track from track. Yeah. Most of these songs are longer. Yes, they are. Uh, it's, you know, only a nine-track album, but it's, what, like, around 55 mm -hmm. minutes, maybe, mm -hmm. like, 53, 54. Uh, so, so definitely, you know, do the math there. These songs average to be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I know that you're a bit higher than me on this album. Sure. You liked it a bit more. So I'd like to kind of get my gripes out there and let me know what you think, because it sounds like we listen to this let's a fight, bit Let's fight. All let's right. fight. Let's fight. Because we, 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 we never, we okay, never but, disagree. But let's, let's establish now that I'm right. Okay. So that, you know, I anyways, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, what ended up kind of bothering me about this album is, yeah, I did feel like the tracks were unnecessarily long at times, especially considering, I, and this sounds more harsh than it is, but I don't feel like these tracks always really went anywhere. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not to say that they're bad tracks, but when you combine that with the length, I, I would expect them to build into something. And I feel like for the most part, they kind of establish a status quo and then kind of just hover over. Can I make know? a point for you? What? Doppelganger, track two. That's sure. a seven minute and five second track, and it really doesn't do <clears throat> much at all. It yeah. establishes the, so the sound, plays with it for a bit, it adds a little little bit of like muted guitar um, but in it, it, it like I made a note that it, it builds a little bit but not really mm -hmm. I mean it, it's kind of more intense at the end but everything about the antlers and the way that they write songs is so subtle especially coming off of burst apart where they yeah. went away from that now they're going back to that subtleness see you see and, and that's a very good point and if we're talking about the songs just kind of meandering and staying in the same dynamic range you know that's kind of what they did on hospice for a lot of it but with hospice I felt like it worked because they were really good going for that emotional pull. Mm -hmm. And it was and devastating. It, exactly. They and, it off. and it was effective. Here, I don't feel like they're trying to tug at your heartstrings much. They're just kind of trying to set up a sound, and they linger on it. And it sounds cool. Like, I, I can kind of get wrapped up into it. But then once I get, you know, kind of towards the end of the album, it wears a little bit. Now, I think one thing that really saves it for me, though, is that I think any of these individual tracks are really pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I didn't pick them as tracks. You did. But I would even cite track 7, Parade, and track 8, Surrender. As, as being, uh, you know, very memorable tracks. Mm -hmm. uh, even if I feel like the sound is something that's already been established previously on the album. So, you know, I'm a little bit torn because I think that from a technical standpoint, they're doing some really cool things, but a, a few items, a few aspects of this album really dilute the other the other kind of, you know, good things that they are doing. And, and I am also torn, lying naked on the floor. Oh, uh, oh God. The back half of this album, I did feel like was was it ended very well. I loved mm -hmm. track seven parade, track eight surrender, and I thought the last track refuge was was very good, a nice way to close, almost a more optimistic way of closing this. This track this this album is not a happy record. It's something that is very introspective. It's something that you know, you have to engage at least a bit emotionally on. I listened to this mm -hmm. album a lot when I was running, so that probably I had a more intimate experience with this album. But one thing yeah. that I really noticed about their sound is while they've done like while they took all these riffs and changed their sound, they're incorporating a lot of jazz elements, every single thing about the sound is incredibly deliberate. I don't yeah. think that there's anything on this album that that was, that was that you hear that is not perfectly intentional by the band. And, and, and coupled with that, I think they produced it absolutely perfectly. I think mm -hmm. they just knocked production out of the park. Everything's mixed great, the effects are nice, a little bit of reverb on, on most everything, um, and it just very crisp, clear drum work. And I think that the drums really help just hold these songs together. Now, I don't disagree with you at all when it comes to some of these tracks meandering a bit. They certainly do, um, and I think that that probably could have been toned down a bit. And, and honestly, probably it made me like this album more, but I think that the overall quality of the record is just very even, and it's a great listening experience because, because of that. Now, I've said in many recent reviews that originality is the number one thing that's most important to me on top of album um, listening experience, one cohesive album listening experience, and this has both. Both. And that's yeah, why that's I think right. I'm higher than you. So this, this is a very original sound um, that, that not a lot of artists are even dabbling in combining indie rock elements and jazz right now. Um, so that was refreshing. And then on top of it, they made it a straight through great album listen. So I'm I'm digging it, but I'm not in love with it. I'd say I have to be at least 85 to 86 on an album to be in love with it and then have to want to keep listening to it. I'm only at like an 83 here. I'm going 77. Okay, so that averages out to an even 80 from Velocities and Music. <laughs> 
just under the cusp of what we would consider a must-listen record. Still a very good record. If mm -hmm. you've listened to Familiars, if you're familiar with Familiars, please go out and leave us a comment. What was your experience? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Do you not like jazz? What's your problem? Let us know at www.velocitiesdemusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesdemusic. And, as always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and let Tom know that's an awesome green shirt. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward.